All right, welcome back everybody to Founders Corner. Today I have my very, 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 very special guest, um, Avery, and he is actually um, one of the co-founders of Corridor. So he was one of the, you know, the few, the, the selected that started with us at the very beginning. Today I'm going to talk to him about and in pure honesty, so you can be as honest as you want. There's no, uh, there's no conditions here. But uh, we're going to be talking about how um, his experience was at the very beginning, um, being in a startup, the ups and downs, how he dealt with it, um, being uh, in a technical role with a somewhat technical founder. I would call myself pretty technical, but okay, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever you say, Seth. Um, so today is going to be actually a really fun conversation with Avery because uh, him and I are constantly bantering back and forth. So um, I don't think this is going to be any different. Yeah, so. no, I really don't think so. I feel like <laughs> a lot of You things. have no filter. That's your issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially with you, just because we've known each other, right? You said since, well, since I was in high school, which is a very long time. Yeah, it's been way too long. Yeah. I don't know why I'm friends with you, to be honest yeah, with you. But yeah. uh, um, so, look, like at the, I remember our conversation because it was at uh, our friend Daniel's. It was very sporadic, okay. too. It just happened to all line it was up just, as well. It just kind of worked out. Mm -hmm. um, you had just finished your computer degree mm -hmm. uh, or computer science degree. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, Avery, what are you up to? And you yeah. said, I just finished my computer science degree. I was like, sick, I have an idea. You want to talk? <laughs> so yeah. what happened? What, why did you even engage? Like, what was going through your head? What were you trying to achieve? Like, what was, what, yeah. tell me everything. Well, in the beginning, like, I, in my old job, you know, I just wasn't happy with it. The typical story of, you know, the it's very simple and stable, like, nine to five job. You clock in, you clock out, you earn your money. And, I mean, I, I did that for five years, and I was like, at that point, I was like getting kind of bored. There was no progression, nothing like I'm that. I'm not going to lie. I have no idea why you stuck around on that job for so long. <laughs> like, it was one of those jobs where I was like, what is wrong with you? Why are you still there? It was just stable, right? It was safe. Like, everyone my, my everyone was happy around me, and like, this, like, oh, yeah, you got, you got a so job. So not, not to make this a culture thing, but do you think that's a culture thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it, it, it can be. Um, yeah, because how my parents are like my dad has his own little business just yeah. for that kind of stuff i think my mom and dad know the struggles of like owning your own business and they're like no you don't do that you go so, stable so a lot of people <laughs> don't actually know this about you mm -hmm. but uh your mom actually has what like 10 phds or something like this no <laughs> no, no she, she's currently working on her computer side degree <laughs> <laughs> no yeah no she just graduated with her uh, phd last year and so she's 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 insanely smart like perfect english so what happened no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> it all kept with her that's what happened see i'm i'm just uh i'm making all the shots so that eventually yeah. you come back and i actually feel comfortable enough to shoot back <laughs> this is not the real him just so everybody knows <laughs> well, well we'll see when we start talking about how the team culture is here oh then, okay <laughs> then like get it. okay um so okay, yeah. So you were you were at the nine five yeah. for five years. Yeah. Um. You're like, okay, I'm not happy. I think you even started uh, as soon as you graduated. You actually did start somewhere. You had a you had a, you were working somewhere, right? Um, yeah. In yeah. Computer science. Yeah. I had, I, had, I, had, I had an internship uh, at a company. Was it a small or a big company? It was a small company. Mm -hmm. Um. They had already been like established, but they were like kind of like transitioning to like a new step or new path. It's called pivoting. Pivoting, yeah. Yep. Oh, we'll get into yeah, that. Yeah. Don't pivoting. worry. Yeah. <laughs> My love for pivoting. Um, so yeah, I did that for, for four months and then that was kind of like a, I will say your your stereotypical like, Startup? Development, uh, development job. Uh -huh. In a sense that like, they like throw you in a dark closet and like, hey, we need this. So by, startup. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We need this by the end of the month, you know, get it done or else. So, so like, did you have like a technical lead at that time or was it like... I kind of did. I had a, a technical lead or a supervisor, I guess, but he was more focused on just um, making sure things were running still. So, so he was he was more stressed about that than worry about running a team. So one of the things for me is like when I'm when I'm talking to startups, um, I'm always telling them to be proactive with their technical team mm -hmm. because because you're right. At the end of the day, it's always reactive, and they hire kids out of out of like. Um, uh, like university, let's say. Yeah. You're lucky if you get them from university. University mm -hmm. kids usually go for the the bigger roles. Yeah. Um. But you get those like accelerator programs, things yeah. like that. Yeah. And they come out of that, and they assume, and by they I mean like 
the you know the startups the non technicals mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they assume that hey you just came out of a computer science degree you should know everything yeah so yeah. you being through accelerator and me working with daniel um who is from university yeah i can clearly tell the difference in mentality mm-hmm. and of course you've you've transitioned you've yeah. become significantly better the, yeah not not to downgrade accelerator programs but in my opinion accelerator programs don't teach you how to solve a problem mm-hmm. do they actually teach you fundamentals they teach you the fundamentals uh but it's more like how se- in depth though uh just enough so you know like what to do in the sense of like kind of like okay you have this problem you kind of know the the rough steps of how to get to it mm-hmm. but you may, you may not know you know the best way to do it or if the the way you're going down is the correct way i think that's the biggest oh issue okay yeah so, yeah well and keep in mind university it's four years mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. let's be real half of it is probably yeah. options so at least it's two years of a program yeah your program was how long uh it was three months was, three months it was three months but those six months no, it was three months, but it was like it was like it was it was like seven days a week though. Uh-huh, like okay, so it's days. like it's so boot camp. Really, yeah, boot it's camp like a boot style. camp style. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a couple of boot camp styles I've heard of that are really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, but you're right, like the pro, not all programs are great. Yeah, uh, and so that that comes back to what I was saying is like with startups, you you talk to non technical founders and they're trying to team up with a co founder, mm-hmm. right? A technical one. Yeah, and they just assume that all education is the same education. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree, hundred percent. And that's that's bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I because there was definitely a lot of students in my class who were like clearly they just did it just to do it. Yeah, and there are other people who are like well, just, everyone's yeah. going. You know, oh, there's so much jobs in computer science. Mm-hmm. Computer science. Mm-hmm. I think it's the same as when there was the uh, what do you what was the last boom. Uh, oil and gas boom yeah. everyone went into oil mm-hmm. they went to the fields and tried to make as much cash as possible yeah. right yeah. um it's the same concept like yeah. the gold rush yeah you know um when there was a gold rush everyone went into mining yeah so it's super nice in a sense that if you are like a more mature startup then there's a lot of people out there for you to hire yeah. for you know pretty cheap well because very low. because you can afford the time mm-hmm. Because exactly. you can actually take the time to train yeah, them. Yeah. yeah. But in terms of like a startup, I know like we had this problem early on, just trying to find decent developers. And it's just Dear like God. It was it, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. I remember I think it tell, telling you like we had over a hundred applications and I think like eighty percent of them didn't even pass like the first like round. Like internally, like with Corridor. Yeah, yeah. We had a hundred applicants and yeah. we oh my yeah, god, yeah, I didn't even know yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's why I don't want to deal with that stuff. That's exactly why. Yeah. So Avery, just so everybody knows, um, Avery actually uh, was part of the hiring process and training process. So um, the reason I asked you here is because you have a really interesting perspective um, that will show our non-technical founders, even technical ones, what they're really about to get themselves into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, a hundred <laughs> is a really good point. I remember uh, when we were hiring. The only time I heard about anybody was you're right. It was when we were doing the problem solving. Yeah. And my God, the amount of people that failed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, how many applicants would you say um, we had in total? We we ended up hiring three. So, mm-hmm. out of how many applicants did we actually have? That they got kind of like passed to like like no like in total like just resumes being processed oh resumes being processed yeah it's gotta be well over well over a hundred like just so just 3%. coming to my inbox yeah so three yeah. percent yeah and one of them we we let go mm-hmm. pretty much in the first month yeah yeah and the other two we kept yeah so really two percent success rate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. wow and like a little inside of our um like interview process in case anyone wants to work, but <laughs> uh, yeah. it's, it's like it's it's it is really very in depth. Like you know, there's the intro, there's like the uh, I did that on purpose. Yeah. Um, so our the- training program is extensive mm-hmm. to weave out. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm always a believer in the fact that um, you should always hire slowly, mm-hmm. um, and then fire quickly. Mm-hmm. Or let go. Mm-hmm. In Canada, you can't fire as easily yeah. as the U.S. But, yeah. um, but so let's go through the steps, right? So mm-hmm. just so the audience can know how we do it. Yeah. So we do our discovery call, yeah. which is the typical five questions. Yeah. 
which makes it really sad for me that you just said 80% fail. Because by the way, the questions are simple. Mm -hmm. The questions are literally, what are your five-year goals? Mm -hmm. What are you planning to, like, why did you hire apply to our job? Yeah. What made us special? They couldn't answer these questions? It was, it was like, yeah, it was more like they couldn't answer it. And also, like, they didn't, they didn't do anything to like make themselves like stand out or stick. Cause I've been there like before, like before you, it was like literally just like every single company that I could apply for, I hit apply for and that kind of stuff. And then I get a call back and then I realize like, oh shit, I, I don't know who this company is, that kind of stuff. So it was like with that mistake. It's, it's interesting being on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> so with that mistake in the, in my, in the background, I was like, Hey, let me weave out those people who are just cl clicking apply every single place. And so that way, I can get like the genuine people. That kind of blows my mind because what's the point of wasting your time applying mm -hmm. if you're not even prepped? Yeah. Or if you get a call, I get I get the mass applying thing because mm -hmm. you're really just saying I'll apply to anything that's available, and then and then when I when I get a call back or I get an interview, then I'll look into it. How come yeah. they don't do that? Anyways, that's a different story. Yeah. So there's the discovery questions. Mm -hmm. Then we do the problem solving. Yeah. yeah. Um, Google, Apple. Dropbox, that style yeah. of questioning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, get across the bridge in seven minutes. Yeah, our favorite, <laughs> our favorite question. That's my yeah, those, those type of questions. I like the light switch question. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. one's, uh, you hear some unique answers on yeah. that one. Yeah. Um, and then we, uh, what's our third? It's the personality test, which they that's do what, at that, home. That's the fourth one. The oh, third, that's the, the fourth third, one. Depending, so for developers, it's a technical test. Oh, okay, yeah. Problem solving, then technical mm -hmm. test. Then we do the at-home personality yeah. test. yeah. Um, then once we have actually like put it all together, mm -hmm. we love you. We, this is, this is kind of cool fit. Mm -hmm. We go to the last one, which is a, um, panel, interview. panel interview, yeah. which doesn't involve you actually no. as the interviewer. Yeah. No. Yeah. They really don't see a second face until the panel interview. Yeah. I, to be honest with you at the panel interview though, like I would say it's 80% you're going through. Mm-hmm. Like you really have to mess it up to not get through. Yeah, yeah, you have to really like flip your personality and stuff yeah. like that to be like, ooh. Yeah, that's happened once. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, so then once we do that, then we hire you. Yeah. So we we take an extensive approach to hiring. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Which I which I think is great, um, especially for us being a startup. As I know, we talk about this all the time. Like, yeah. you need to build a good foundation, and that foundation starts with the people. Yeah. If you don't have good people to hold the company up, then obviously you're gonna tumble. Well, the ball. you know, uh, this is my fourth startup mm -hmm. in theory. Um, well, not in theory. Literally, this is my fourth startup, yeah. and what I realize is is the I, I can only do so much. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you got to put people in place that can actually help you drive it forward. Yeah. They don't need to be able to do everything but they should definitely be enough of a generalist mm -hmm. that you can throw them into different scenarios but at the same time they should be specialized in their area yeah yeah that's so, like that's like the superstar yeah yeah definitely like yeah working here like there's a bunch of hats that i wear because you know obviously like what are the develop, hats developer big big one there i'm the a uh, plant waterer in the office. <laughs> <laughs> I take care of all the plants. I love the plant um, too. We call you the plant man. Growing influencer, you know. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you do a lot of TikToks. That's right. And also help with the background. Like help, I help you set up this whole like your yeah, podcast setup. All absolutely. Stuff. Uh, you help with uh, that. You also help with uh, um, the website. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you're, you're a developer, but we're still doing a lot of things in-house mm -hmm. to avoid... The influencer one is hilarious. Oh my God. <laughs> I cannot believe how good you are with it. <laughs> People literally still comment on our on our TikToks yeah. that like you're a superstar. <laughs> like literally. I, I think you should change careers, to be yeah. honest with you. I, I, listen, listen. <laughs> you're a paid we'll actor. See. We'll see. That's true. We That's buy true. you lunch every time yeah. you do one. So you're a paid actor, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not paid well, but you're paid actor. <laughs> Today also is brought to you by food. <laughs> so um, so what excited you to join Corridor? Like, what, what did I say or do? I mean, besides the genius idea. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, besides the fact that the idea was, like, enticing to you, mm -hmm. what excited you about a startup? Because... 
I don't think you knew what you were getting yourself into. Did yeah, you? I know. No, no. no, no okay. No. Like I knew. Yeah. Um, like Milan didn't know. Yeah. I've uh, seen Milan a- is our project yeah. manager, by the way. Mm-hmm. But Milan, I don't think knew how much of an up and downs there are. Yeah. Um, we were lied to cons- like how like months <laughs> on months by clients. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like there's that moment. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Actually, this is this was my th- these were my emotions. But like literally like this is 22 and uh, 22 and two in review, <laughs> essentially. Mm-hmm. But um, you get your first client. We got super excited. Yeah. We're like, we're up. On, we're on the rise. Yeah. Boys, yeah. let's go. And mm-hmm. then we we also made a lot of mistakes in celebrating too early. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes, we did. Uh, there was a. There was a time uh, where I bought confetti cannons to. <laughs> I remember that. That's to, right. Yeah, to celebrate every win we got, and this was we back- got sick of cleaning them up after not getting the deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a twelve pack. I think we shot like six of those over that, and we haven't closed a single deal. <laughs> oh my god! No, I, you're right. I remember that. Is uh, you know, and that's that's the reality of it, though, mm-hmm. right? We we were just learning. Like you keep you you at the beginning of podcast you mentioned the pivoting yeah right we had to pivot not pivot but like we just kind of had to change our focus yeah yeah we still we still had an ultimate goal but then like we had to change like what path we wanted to take to get to that goal yeah and, and and then and then the startup world became one of our um, bread and butter because of the because of the fact that it was so um, we were so well versed in it mm-hmm. right yeah and. Um, and the value we provided to the startup community yeah. was way more, like it was immense compared to any other industry we were targeting. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I still tell people, pick your niche because we didn't have that many resources at that time. Yeah, no. We didn't. Yeah. So we were we were pretty stretched. Mm-hmm. If you ask Ari, our marketing girl, she'll tell you we were stretched. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she, would come, and she was coming like, like in the middle of that she wasn't there like since the very beginning she wasn't there from the beginning but she was here since january yeah Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. so like she's been around for a year now yeah but i I honestly say like between actually her anniversary was yesterday oh january 5th oh yeah we We should say something to her we should yeah yeah Yeah. hey ari congratulations (laughs) on a year anniversary (laughs) she'll watch this video she will (laughs) she has to (laughs) it's her job i hope she watches it um no and so yeah that's what i mean is like one of those uh like the ups and downs of a startup world Mm -hmm. is immense and not everyone can do it no not at all yeah like it takes a lot of mental power to do yeah even for me like i knew a bit about it just at least from the development side just because you had like daniel and peter who are like close friends with me Mm -hmm. and i hear stories from them like daniel is a complete robot who will work you know nine to nine every single day that kid was disgusting yeah disgusting yeah and so genius mm -hmm. but disgusting yeah yeah so i heard about that like oh i'll be like okay i'm gonna work some late nights but it shouldn't be too bad and that kind of stuff (laughs) um so yeah (laughs) that was your fault (laughs) yeah yeah. you should have known better (laughs) yeah yeah um but yeah no as things started to go on that kind of stuff i very enjoyed it because uh, I do think you have to be a little bit crazy to be in a startup. You have to be beginning. completely crazy. Yeah. 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 No, uh, and, and it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. No. Um, that's actually kind of why it it really upsets me when I, wa- I, I like go through LinkedIn mm-hmm. and I see a bunch of people being like, I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. And you look a little deeper. You don't have to look that deep yeah. to know that this guy literally got one contract or two contracts and he's calling himself an entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. And, and he's working somewhere else right now. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you quit as soon as it got hot or mm-hmm. like uh, hard. Yeah. But you're sitting here telling like, and and so yeah, it, like kind of ruins the name a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like to be honest with you, the and I can't, I tell this to everybody, grit is the number one thing mm-hmm. in startup. Yeah. You have to stay there long enough to get lucky. And then that luck, you have to be smart enough to convert on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, f- ah, I forgot who it was. I think it's um, uh, the guy from Game of Thrones who plays... Um, oh, the, the guy little, that plays in the, Game the, of Thrones? The, the little short guy. Oh, uh, that's not... You're going to get canceled for that one. Oh, I forgot his name. But yeah, it was, he had a yeah. great quote. Where he's, he's uh, like, we'll call him by his main character name. What, what was it? 
I don't remember now. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. Game of Thrones was a long time ago. Season eight, I just forgot because uh, that was a very bad. They ruined it for yeah. everybody. Anyways, his uh, the quote the quote was like, "I hate it when people say that I was lucky because that just like is an excuse for like all the hard work that he's done." I'm with them. Uh, look, no entrepreneur likes to be called lucky mm-hmm. because it's not just being lucky. Yeah, it, it's a lot of factors. There is luck, but it's a different sense of the fact that. You have to work hard enough and long enough for that opportunity to come in. Good man. Exactly. So, like, he didn't get lucky in the sense that, like, overnight, there it is. He got lucky and he became a superstar. He put in the time. Mm -hmm. He grinded every single day Mm -hmm. for years. Yeah. Um, There's a a saying that I've heard before, and I love it, is um, it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> 10 years to be an overnight success mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. so like and you know you can take that book from malcolm um right yeah. is is like you know it takes 10 years to be a uh, you know to perfect what you do yeah right sure you can 10 is just a good standard number yeah but how many startups do we see every single day that come to us and they're so every startup you can say yes or no because you deal with the startups <laughs> too right yeah Every startup comes up and thinks they're the next thing. Yes. Yeah. 100%. But if you didn't think like that, and that's what frustrates me when people are like, don't think you're the next thing. Okay. But if they don't think like that, they're not going to take the leap of faith. Yeah. So yeah. you have to think like that. Yeah. Otherwise, why would you be stupid enough to take that leap? Yeah. Right. And you might make it. Mm-hmm. Right. It is a probability. Everybody has a probability of success. Yeah. But you have to stick around long enough to see that probability come yeah. to fruition. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's why I think I'm like I'm definitely proud of our team because we're all like new guys off the block who've never been in a start before. That, I did that and on purpose. Yeah, I did that on purpose. And we learned very quickly to like maintain like um, expectations and that kind of stuff and understand like you know this is not just a you wake up overnight and then all of a sudden you're you're bigger than Apple type deal. Yeah, that's it's just not gonna happen. <laughs> so the reason why I did the why I looked at you guys at an early stage career mm-hmm. is because you guys are willing to put in the time. You're willing to put in the work mm-hmm. to really show, hey, I tried it. Yeah. Right? Whereas if I go to someone more mature, mm-hmm. they're like, dude, you got me for two years or a year. Mm-hmm. And if you don't make it happen, I'm out. Yeah. Because I don't have that much time anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Which is fair. Yeah. But... That's why I kind of went for the younger ones, mm-hmm. like you youngins. A, you're naive enough that you'll take the leap. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, we all have to be naive. Well, I, I joke around with my team because they, they kind of ask, like, oh, like, why why did you hire me and that kind of stuff? And, like, I give them the joke answer, but it's not really a joke. It says, like, oh, because <laughs> you were desperate enough. You were desperate to say yes to the job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's actually a good point, yeah. Like, desperation kind of shows me that you want to be here. Yeah, yeah. Right? And in today's market right now, God, you can you can like walk on the street and if there'll probably be like people like sitting there going, Are you a developer? Are you a developer? Yeah. We'll see what happens now when there's a bunch of layoffs. Yeah. <laughs> like definitely like Leah, last year or like the year before, it was definitely so well, easy. Well, because COVID really yeah. amplified it, right? And now you can work anywhere, right? So what excited you about coming to quarter? Like what did I say or do that made you excited about what quarter was? Uh what made me excited was that the fact that I could have um, a huge impact mm-hmm. on what we do, like it was like definitely like for both good and bad, mm-hmm. like the actions that I do and, and habit today do affect tomorrow. You have to admit in the one year that you've been around, yeah, you're a completely different person in terms of career wise. Yes. Yeah. No, hundred percent. Like, yeah. like yeah. you, w- the things you've learned at a startup, <laughs> You will never learn at a career stage. Mm-hmm. Never. Even personally, too. Like, I didn't realize that I could, like, sit behind a computer screen for almost 12 hours a day and enjoy it. And be, wow, and what- lying on a podcast. Are we? <laughs> 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 you hear that, team? <laughs> we must work 12 hours. Uh, no. But, like, just, like, yeah, no. Like, working long days and that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I do get exhausted and I do get burned out. Yeah. But it's, like, the fact that I can still wake up the next day. And be and, excited to still do it. Yeah. And so yeah. do this. Not the same thing, but like pretty much the same routine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that I've learned about you as well. Um, And and so the original people were you, Bob, Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, uh, Milan, 
Milan. <laughs> I'm Avery. <laughs> uh, Milan and uh, Jared. Yeah. Um, and every single one of you have a different personality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every single one of you guys. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how the culture is the same. Mm-hmm. Like we all like banter. We all like to have fun. Yeah. The humble hustle is probably the most perfect <laughs> explanation of our culture I've yeah. ever heard. Yeah. Um, but like, is that being humble by saying that? <laughs> Anyways, so you, well, you, you can you can judge. You're on the line every time. <laughs> you you keep prob- you keep saying humble yourself, and then you go like, I'm the genius around here. <laughs> yeah, but I say that out of humbleness. <laughs> Like I don't mean it. I'm being yeah, literally yeah. the you opposite. Do need, you do need an ego, that's for sure. I if you don't have it, you wouldn't be egoistic enough to say I can make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So I do think ego plays a part, but but it was amazing to watch. Like with Jared, you got to be tough. You have to like he's a perfectionist in his head, so yeah. he has to like you have to teach him how to become perfect. Yeah, yeah. With you, it's like you got to give you your space. You have to let you make mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Um, with Milan, you have to make sure he understands. Um, well, we jokingly call him a robot too. Yeah, he, he he needs to understand everything before. Exactly. He makes like he decision. needs to fully understand stuff mm-hmm. before you can like he feels comfortable enough to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes him a little more on the cautious side. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, he loves to learn. Mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. keep him moving keep him moving forward yeah. he loves it yeah um bob is uh we joke about this on a regular basis yeah. but bob world like, yeah it's bob's world it's bob's world bob has a fantastic skill of just getting people to remember him and it, just just it's it, yeah 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 <laughs> I, I, that's the best way I, yeah that's you're right yeah it's literally like the best way to like yeah <laughs> I can't even put it in skills. Like, I don't even know what skill he has that he does it. I yeah. think it's his name. We joke about this on a regular basis, but yeah. I, it's Bob Jones. It's like literally the easiest name yeah. to remember. Yeah. It's, 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 I guarantee people <laughs> who listen to this podcast are going to leave and they're going to be like, I remember nothing of the podcast except yeah. for Bob Jones. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, he has some hilarious. And he always characters. does that too, right? Yeah. When he meets someone new, he's like, Hi, I'm Bob Jones. Yeah. He does this like voice too. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm mm-hmm. Bob Jones. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. There's what happened a, to your voice? He also just loves talking to you. The other yeah. times, like we reach is like Bob, we're not your client. <laughs> <laughs> just, just stop talking. In uh, in our marketing standups, it's so funny because as soon as we start, Bob goes just on a rampage and yeah. just like boom, 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 and then doesn't talk for the rest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he really gets the the ship going, and then he just like hides. Yeah, he just hides. <laughs> it's just like, yep, yeah, I did my uh, my my work here. Okay, so going back to. If I'm a non-technical founder, Mm -hmm. how do I convince or not even convince, but like portray my vision and get them excited to come on board to help me start my product? Mm -hmm. Well, for me personally, the biggest thing was being able to have like that control and that influence in the company. Okay. Yeah. So like the bigger picture. The bigger picture. What you can bring to the table with the bigger picture. Like make them feel important like there's a reason why we're bringing you on you know we need this this and this you're providing did i this. do any of that with you uh i feel like i just told you you're gonna learn a lot you told me you're gonna it, for me yeah for me it was a bit different for us because like i had since we knew each other beforehand i kind of had fair. that almost blind trust i'd be like okay i appreciate what? that let's, let's see you. what happens and it's also kind of like you said to you i was a bit desperate this is was, weird you're like the nicest i've ever had you be <laughs> a- a- avery and i literally <laughs> butt heads so often um and and we have a thing. So anytime we get into an argument or disagreement, let's call it, um, we always hug it out. Yeah. That's Afterwards, we yeah. just literally yeah. hug it out. Like yeah. it's like you just get up and you're like, come here, come yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it, ever since we've kind of gone uh, virtual in our office, yeah, we haven't butt heads very often. Also, I've learned a bit more and like definitely like learn how to do That's things true. properly. That's true. But I remember, yeah, no, in the beginning when you brought me on, because like you you were even hesitant too, because you're like, yo, this I know you only from like a friend aspect, not from like a employee aspect so i don't know how this will work out just let you know like mm-hmm. i am very work focused so okay perfect that's exactly what i wanted um and you told me to like don't like there'll be days you know long days we'll be angry mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff but okay sure that's understandable what happens i just didn't realize like those angry days will be like week two <laughs> <laughs> well we we hit the ground running 
Yeah. Like yeah. we hit the ground running. Like yeah. when I brought you guys on, like we were ready to rip. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, so like it was like when I brought you on, I was like, get it together, get it good together as fast as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And let's like, we're starting in like, a, yeah. like less than a month. Yeah. Yeah. I think definitely like those, that first month was definitely a defining moment for me to be like, okay, like I can do this. Yeah. Because like, I think that was the month, like I made the most mistakes and like the, the most buddy head between you and yes. I. Yeah. Um, Cause I remember specifically like you had us work on a project and you've already started it and yeah. I deleted an entire Yes. The entire section of the project yep. and you're like you're like where did that go i was like oh you just said to start again so i just cleared oh my it all God. and so yeah <laughs> i was so mad at that though. and, and, and it, it wasn't it was it was for you it was just like you were mad but you're just like just, uh, just get it done just uh, just you know you're a sigh of yeah. oh dear god yeah. <laughs> yeah no and uh it was uh it was fun being in that environment i i always tell this to startups enjoy the start mm-hmm the, the, the beginning is the most fun mm-hmm. of any startup, in mm-hmm. my opinion. You have... It's the honeymoon phase. It's the honeymoon stage. Mm-hmm. And and I would love to say that that lasts, but it's it's it doesn't. Um, especially <laughs> as you grow. Yeah. It's different kind of honeymoon, mm-hmm. I guess you can call it. Yeah. Because um, like even now, like before we were inseparable. We were hanging out all day, every yeah. night. Yeah. Like we would like eat dinner at the office. We would mm-hmm. hang out. We're there in the morning. Like yeah. it's all hands on deck. We're yeah. all talking technical. Yeah. There was no customers at that time. There was nothing. Like we were all in hands. Like yeah. you know, rolling yeah. up our sleeves, and then, and then customers started becoming a thing. Then mm-hmm. we had to hire marketing. Then we yeah. have to do this. Then we have to do that. And then you know, for me especially as an as the as the president, or CEO, or whatever. Well, at that time there is no CEO. It's yeah. another pet peeve of mine as CEOs. Um, <laughs> there's no executives for me to be chief of. Um, so as president, like you kind of have to step away from all that, mm-hmm. right? Um, and it kind of it kind of saddens me because I, I I miss those. Like those yeah. are the fun times to me. Um, is just getting in the into the problem solving. Now mm-hmm. it's like you got to do this, you got to do that. There's like ten it's different di- it's directions. different problem solving for you. It's different problem solving. Yeah, because you usually got your hands dirty, get into the code and that kind of stuff. Yeah, but now you're more. Well, I'm I'm getting my hands dirty in everything. Yeah, you hands yeah. dirty more like the client. Yeah, the client clients, relationship. relationships, yeah. the 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 design, the yeah. UI, yeah. all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. perfect. All right, so you get one chance <laughs> to honestly say, how did you feel about working with me in 2022? Um, it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's funny. there. There were no. I mean, like there were days where it was just like, like, like I was happy that you were so busy because you didn't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I come near you, you're like, shit. What do you want? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no. I mean, for the for the for the most part, like no. I think it was it was great. Um, still learning a lot. Uh, we. We obviously butt heads all the time. Not all the time. Not all the time. It's no, gone yeah. away. It's gone away. Like we're yeah. significantly reduced yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. There was a time that we kind of got your your hands dirty again. I was like, like you got mad about that. I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, I'll accept. Just get out of here. I remember saying, like, just it was like check yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Seb, you best check yourself. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, so what are your goals for twenty twenty three? Goals for twenty twenty three. Um. Other than our, like the typical goals I have for the company, I just want to just you know, uh, just grow the team out as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like to you know get to a point to like way to put pressure on Bob there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Bob! I need to grow the team. <laughs> no, I love I love managing people. Uh, I think it's fun. It has its own challenges. Yeah, I gotta say though, you are probably one of the better managers, just because I don't know why you're so patient. <laughs> No idea. Most developers aren't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting to me watching yeah. you because a lot like feedback is always that Avery helps. Avery's mm-hmm. here. Avery's supporting. Mm-hmm. Avery's trying to teach us. Yeah. Um, but then try Jared. Like Jared would hate that. Mm-hmm. Like he would be like, do this. And if they don't, and Jared to me is a more of a typical developer he's done mentality he's, he's got a very good at it though he's actually got improved i think he's starting he, to find he's 100 yeah. improved but if i had to tell him manage these not manage i think he'll be fine with managing mm-hmm. um it's not a management issue but yeah. like teaching 
Mm -hmm. Especially early. Yeah. Um, like right out of school. Yeah. Jared would hate his life. It's actually it's tough too, especially if you have every, like I still have responsibilities and, and projects to do. Yeah. And to like be behind or like rushing to finish those. And then on top of that having, you know, your devs come to you for help. Yeah. Like uh, all yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. it's way, way more it keeps yeah. adding on top of it. Yeah. And so yeah, there were there were some days where it'd be like just everyone leave, leave me it. alone. <laughs> everyone leave me alone. Call you sick just so I could. I would say put on some music headphones, but your music is quieter than freaking <laughs> just you not having music. Yeah, well, the, I don't even understand how the negative, uh, <laughs> negative volume. The, the marketing team has the volume for yeah, it. That's music, true. So. Yeah, Ari does. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Avery, for being here. And uh, right. you know that I think I think your experiences and your thoughts and and kind of where your perspective comes from is really helpful to non technicals to understand. Okay, when I'm talking to a potential cohort founder or even a developer, kind of gives them that perspective. Yeah, yeah. I think especially during the early age uh, stages, you do want to worry about skill and technical skill stuff. But at the same time, you do want to make sure like they are a fit for you. Yes. Like, that's the most important. It is a one. marriage. Yeah. It is it a is marriage. A, it's a marriage. Yeah. That's, well, that would cost a lot in the divorce. It always does. <laughs> it always does. Divorce is never easy. Never easy. So appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you for being here. Even thank though you, uh, you have a lot of tickets that you still have to deliver. I know. Deliver. I know. So Taking time out of my you. day. Thank you. I appreciate to you. To all of our clients, I'm sorry if any products are late. This <laughs> <is because. laughs> all right. Well, now that you've apologized to all of them. Um, anyways, thank you everybody for being here. Um, again, uh, I'd like to give a special thank you to Avery for taking the time to be here with us. And uh, until next time, uh, Corridor out.